Welcome to Grace Family International Church. The following you're about to listen to is a message from Reverend Yinka Ojo, our senior pastor. So sharpen your pencil, grab your notebook and Bible because you're about to be empowered. Listen and be blessed. Thank you for opening our eyes, leading us and guiding us. We'll be lost without you. Thank you, Father. We acknowledge your voice. We make a choice to listen to your voice. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All right. Divine guidance. Today we're just going to round up. Conclusion. All month long. And I want to beg you, actually. You know, I'm like Paul. Who said, I beseech you by the mercy of God. I want to beg you. Many of you did not attend all and listen to all of the teachings 100%. And if it's only this series we took this month that you listen to this year, you will succeed in an unusual manner. Just. If all you know about Christianity is just this series of teachings on divine guidance how to hear from god how to follow the voice of the spirit you cannot be a failure in any aspect of your life because if you can hear from god you will make it because you are just a step of divine guidance away from your miracles and your blessings from God. This world is like a jungle. You need a compass. This world is like a desert without marks, without roads, without you need help to navigate this life. And that's why Jesus Christ said in John 16, he said that when I go, I will bring, to, I will send to you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. He will lead you and guide you into all truth and he will show you things to come before it happens. But you must learn how to work with them, how to flow with them. You must learn this, this teachings that have gone out this month. How many of you have been blessed by what you've been hearing this month? What have you been hearing this month? Amen. And, um, and sometimes I look at Christians and I shake my head and I say, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm sorry for you because the devil, the devil. There are some kind of Christians the devil likes. Ignorant Christians. Christians that will not value the word, pay the price to hear. So we have all of these teachings on CDs and MP3s and you can put them on your phone. You can get a flash disc and come and upload them. Just go over there after the service and we'll get the CDs and, and just get all of these things and listen over and over and over and over and over, over again. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God They are the sons of God That's been our main thrust Romans eight fourteen. As many as are led by the Spirit of God They are the sons of God If you are a child of God How do you become a son of God? How do you how, John chapter 1 verse 12 As many as received Jesus John 1 12 As many as received Jesus Gave he the power to become the sons of God The child of God And if you are a child of God Because you've given your life to Christ Then the Spirit of God is available To lead you into all truth Praise God and when he is your guide and is your shepherd, there are blessings that will follow your life. Psalm 23 verse 1. Psalm 23 verse 1. Psalm 23 verse 1. Show the, 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 we call it the shepherd psalm. But really, it deals with the fact that if you will allow divine guidance in your life, the, these are the blessings that will manage. This is going to be your testimony. God's promises, these are the things that will begin to happen in your life. Things you begin to see. Psalm 23 verse 1 The Lord is my shepherd The word shepherd means is a guide He will give you instruction He will guide you divinely He will tell you which way to go You will hear his voice 
That's why he said also in John chapter 10 that I'm the good shepherd. Then he said that, that I will lead my own. My sheep hear my voice, the voice of a stranger they do not follow. This year of greater glory has to do with guidance. The glory of God that was upon the children of Israel in the, in the, in the wilderness. Pillar of cloud by day. Pillar of fire by night. That, that, that glory of God as it moved, wherever it moves to, the children of Israel had to move. So, there was an element of guidance in that. If you don't move with the cloud, then the snakes and the serpents and the scorpions and the, all of the, the danger that the wilderness, the desert holds in store, is going to catch up on you. So, it's important that you live your life on earth following the voice of the master Jesus. If you are here, say amen. Don't live by, don't do your own thing and say, I'm, a, I'm my own man. I'm a man of myself. Poor you. Shameful. No. Don't follow the guidance of the sinners and the world to live your life. You will pay for it. You will suffer for it. Take time. To know what God says and to follow Him as your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. One means I shall not lack. This is the major key to prosperity. Amen. In actual fact, moving into July, July is going to be our month of good success and prosperity. Hallelujah. And God says, once I give you divine guidance and you embrace me as your shepherd to lead you and to guide you, you will start walking in prosperity and blessings and you will not lack. And I'm not just talking about money because many a times when we talk about all these things, people think about money, money, cash, cash. You may be doing okay financially but you are not doing okay emotionally. You are not doing okay in your health. You are not doing okay in your marriage. You are not doing okay in your Christian work and your Christian character and testimony. You are not doing okay. So, so, if a deal, so we're talking about a broad approach to you not lacking and not wanting. And then the word of God says, because I am listening to his divine guidance, he makes me. So, verse 1 is what you must keep in mind as you go through the other verses. Because I am, he is my guide, he is my shepherd, I'm listening to him for divine instruction. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, the sheep. The sheep eats pasture, good food. All right. And he leads me beside the still, calm waters. He's talking about serenity for your life. Peace for your life. Because you are following divine instruction and divine guidance. If you are here, say amen. He restores my life. He restores or rejuvenates my life and my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Because I'm listening to him, I've taken him as my shepherd, I'm functioning in divine guidance. Verse 4, yes, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. That is the description of this planet. This planet is the valley of shadow of death. Bombings there, bombings there, Boko Haram here, this there, disease there, the corruption here. And, oh, look, look here. Road accidents on the expressway. This many die. Blah, 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 blah. People are being retrained. Banks are sacking people. And people get to their office not knowing. And then they get there. They can't log in again into their system. And then the HR calls them and said, have you found that? Yeah, you found that from your computer. Yeah, you sacked. This planet is the valley of shadow of death. But... I will fear no evil. Why will I not be afraid? Because I'm receiving signals from, the, from heaven. This earth is the valley of death. Shad valley of the shadow of death. This earth, God, listen, listen, this will shock you. God is not in control of this planet. God is not running this world. Oh, I used to think as a Christian, God is running this world. Yeah, that's what your thinking will get you. When you will not think in line with the Bible. If God is the one running this earth, then God is a poor 
runner, a manager, is not doing things well. It's out of control. God is not running this world. Amen. Now, that's not the end of the statement. The church should be running this world. But right now, Satan and his children are running this world. Satan is the one, by and large, running this world, not God. But the church, you and I, should be running this world. Using the resources and the tools that God gives us. Understanding the scriptures. The authority we have as believers. Finding out our purpose in Christ. Speaking in tongues and binding the bindables and losing the losables. Can somebody say amen? Hey, but no, 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 no. God is not the one in control here. After the millennium and after this dispensation is over and it creates a new heaven and a new earth and then, uh, then God will start ruling again. <laughs> but while the devil seems to be ruling, if you and I as children of God, we will understand divine guidance and follow the good shepherd and do his instructions and be led by the spirit we will control this planet that is the will of god you will control this planet if you take these messages and you start really imbibing them and studying them and going over them again and again and again until you understand what has been said the last few weeks then you will start seeing that you are god's viceroy you are god's uh, deputy you are god's person with delegated authority on the face of this earth and then the devil will back off all the areas he has taken control in your life around you and people that you know and anything that concerns you the devil will begin to back up because now you know who you are praise god so so god says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me i have a i have a GPS little GPS thing in our car so the map of Lagos is the, in fact Nigeria about 50% of the whole of Nigeria has been mapped so I, I don't use it all the time but there's sometimes I go to some parts of Lagos Lagos is a very funny place if you know if you are used to Ikeja and them verons, Kedja GRA and all of this without, I can move around but there was a day I was trying to get to um, to come out of um, Ikorodu Road and I wanted to come to Ikeja, so there was a lot of traffic those, are those days, those kind of traffic that you know this is demonic <laughs> I said look, I gotta do something else I know that if I move, if I get out of that freeway and I go through Shobulu, I don't know, I can get out on the third mainland, am I right? And come and that would be free. But my problem is that if I go into that, if I delve into that area, eh, I can get lost. So I pulled out that GPS machine. I have already programmed a few things there home church so i just punched home and the thing began to lead me and you know i was not afraid at some point you tell me turn in two turn in ahead in five minutes the, the, i was not afraid anymore because i was being led and guided once i followed the instruction sometimes i'll just say ah am i sure you are right and when I get there, lo and behold, it's true. There's a T junction, and I should turn to the left. And I'm wondering, I've never, I didn't know there were these streets here in Lagos. I don't need to know. I just follow. I follow. I follow. And truly, pow! I'm out. Now, if you tell me to take the same road I took again without that GPS, I cannot. I cannot make it. I cannot make it. And the thing will be calling some names of course the person that recorded it inside it is an american 
Oh, but for me, I'll I'll away. Now, I'm the only one in the car, so I'll talk back to you. I said it's called a wolo. A buffet now, Turn around at the rotary. I said, what rotary? The first time I said, so somebody told me Americans don't call it roundabout; they call it rotary. You turn around at the rotary. Okay, I got that one. I got. But I can't. I can't do it, and I cannot do that process again by myself because I don't know that area. But I saw that I was just so confident driving. And I came out, saved time, got on the third main line and came home. Other people spent three hours on the same place because there was no instruction, no information, no direction. Amen. Think about your life. There are other routes you can take that God knows. You're banging your head on one, on one place. Bang, and you're frustration, frustration, frustration. You know, that's why people get suicidal. Because of frustration. You know that there is something on the other side you should achieve. But you cannot get there. You, you are trying. It's not, that you are not, it's not that you're not trying. It's not that you are lazy. You are putting effort. Your effort is not working. There's somebody from above who can give you instruction to make your way out. This world is like a maze. M-A-Z-E. Maze. I don't know if you do all this crossword, not crossword puzzle now. Maze. Um, you try and make your way out of the maze and then sometimes you go, you go and then it blocks. You have to come back. Some, that's a, but because the reason why you can it's 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 defeating you is because you are at this level attached to the earth if you are looking at the maze from the top it won't be difficult so since you have somebody above who is really now that gps what happens is that there is a satellite in outer space you can see but because I have that thing in my car, as soon as I put it on, it locates me. And they start talking to me. And I just start following. I don't need to know the details. Maybe I've never even, I don't need to have had the name of the street before. Somebody who is up there is leading and telling me, go this way, go this way, go this way, go this way, go this way. Sometimes it even gives me option and tells me, do you want to take the shortest direction to the place? Sometimes it tells me, connect this thing, this is your GPS, to the internet and have it upgraded so that I can show you the place. It can tell me the roads that have the most hold up. And then it can redirect me and say, if you want to avoid the hold up, tell me, I punch on it. And that's the way it is with the Holy Spirit. You have a, a GPS on your inside. Of course, you have to be taught on how to operate. I had to get my manual when I first got to God. I never used it before. I had to get the manual and read it and read it and read it and read it and get on the internet and plug it in and get on their website and learn how it works. Don't just think that I can dash you and it will be useful to you. For instance, if I didn't tell you what a rotary is now, you don't know what is he saying? Turn to the right at the next rotary. Rotary club. Oh, which rotary do I know? So you have to you have to learn how it works. The same thing with hearing the voice of spirit. You gotta learn, you gotta learn, you gotta learn. And you have to practice and practice and practice and practice. Amen. So let's go and read him. And he says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You are guiding me. How is he with you? is with you in his person but also by his guidance your rod and your staff they comfort me the, the rod and the staff is used to direct and guide the sheep that way since there's guidance in your life there's comfort in your soul no stress you thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my because i am following your guidance the table is always set there may be enemies all around but they cannot touch me and they cannot touch my food on the table once I am following the guidance of the shepherd, I'm being divinely led. Are you here with me, somebody? You anoint my head with oil. How can you be sure that your head will never lack for oil? By following the voice of the Holy Spirit. How 
can you be sure? And the Bible says that Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, that the, the yoke shall be destroyed. Isaiah 10, 27 and 28. The yoke of the enemy, the problems of the enemy can only be destroyed by the reason of the anointing of God in our lives. So, how do we make sure that our head is always having the anointing and the oil and the empowerment and the endowment of God by listening for his voice and direction every day, every day. Because it, the place of the will of God for your life is the place of the anointing of God for your life. Once you are in the will of God for your life, anointing is available. Always. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over all. I am living in the overflow. I have abundance and excess of blessings. I am experiencing and enjoying the God, the God El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. I am living in the land that flows with milk and honey because I am walking in divine guidance. Shepherd. Shepherd is speaking. I'm following. That's where you get into abundance of health, abundance of prosperity and wealth, abundance of peace of mind, abundance of favor, abundance of decades on the face of this earth, abundance of everything that is good and wonderful by listening and accepting him and letting him function as your shepherd to lead and to guide you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. In bracket. As I am following him. Anybody that is following him, surely goodness and mercy shall follow him or her. Anybody that is just following the flesh, following their senses, following other counsel of their uncles and their friends and everything at work, sinners and the ungodly, God says goodness and mercy will not follow you and since there cannot be any vacuum in nature what is the opposite of goodness and mercy evil and judgment the opposite of good is evil the opposite of mercy is judgment so you don't want to follow his leading and guidance and that's why Jesus Christ said my will for you is not grievous don't think, oh, my will is difficult. God's will. I don't, this will of God is... Somebody told me one time, said, oh, to be a Christian is hard. I said, what kind of Christianity are you practicing? To be a sinner is harder. Because you have a master and he hates you. You have a father, the devil, because you are a sinner, and he is not faithful to you. He has nothing good in some. So, which one is more difficult? I have a father and he's faithful. I have a father and he loves me. I don't know what you're talking about. He said that, listen, my will for you, his will is not grievous. No, don't, don't look at it and say, oh, God wants me only to have one woman. As a wife all my life. Oh, that's difficult to, for an African man. Go and ask all your fathers and your uncles and brothers who kept mother. I don't even know how you think you can be happy. Look, eh, to try and please one woman. Hey, only one. To keep her happy. Day by day, by day, by day, by day. It's a full-time job. Then, Mumu, you add another one on top. You are of all men. We need to something. We need to point what's wrong with you. Amen. That is, I don't know why people have a death wish on their lives. You obviously, you have a death wish as a man. 
and you say the one, the one woman is not enough for me. You, you must, you have a, you have, you have a suicide pact with Satan. Am I, am I communicating somebody now? Oh yeah, you must, you must have a, you must not be normal. Amen. Oh, women are lovely. We love you, but we want only one. One per man. Amen. And then some people say, ah, but ah, ah, it's not easy. It's not easy because you are following Satan's words. Follow the word of God. His will is not grievous. His plan. Ah. So after I collect money, I first of all remove 10%. Uh, oh, Christianity is hard. Oh. Look, being in this is it's harder. I, I remember hearing the statement that uh, some people say that the the cost is ex- education is expensive. I'm afraid of that thing. Education is. Then somebody says, but ignorance is more expensive. Think about it properly. Maybe you're going to spend four years in the university. Maybe you're in the, you're in the government university, state university. Maybe you spend, I don't know how much, but I'm guessing. I'm not, I don't know what it costs. But let's say you spend 100,000, 150,000 naira every year. In four years, how much is that? 600,000. And then you graduate, you did very well, you follow the principles, and you have a very and you graduate and you get a good job amen and they pay you 150,000 naira every month because you paid 150,000 naira every year to get education but then you are saying ha but this 150,000 naira every year is expensive shh now you said it's expensive and you refuse to pay it. And so, you're looking for a job all over the place. And the first year, they say, well, oh, we just wish that you had more than this um, uh, SSS3. We wish you had more than this. We wish, how old are you? You are 37 years. Ah! <laughs> Even the ah! It will just pay you. Amen. It's more expensive. Ignorance is more expensive. Amen. I have a lot of things I can say, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at time. See, whatever you do, I know some Nigerian footballers, maybe they're getting better now. Some Nigerian footballers went into football I went without really being so literate. Some of them just secondary school. Some of them didn't even pass secondary school properly. And they got club. And it's, it's because, I'm saying that because some of you boys here, you're thinking, I'm going to just get football. I'm going to have money. Et cetera. Just, just listen to me carefully. Many of them made money. Some of them, we hear the reports. Some of them put money, and I don't want to mention anybody's name, but if you know what's going on in Nigeria, put money a few years ago, big money, into some banks. Six months later, the banks collapsed. Three, I'm talking on big money, three million dollars, four million dollars. When I read that story, I said, that guy, when, but I, I, this was my conclusion, is paying the high price for ignorance. If he had just had a little bit of more higher education, tertiary education, he would be able to read the papers and look at the papers and say stocks and shares, which are the distressed banks, and not, it would have saved that a little knowledge. I'm already preaching July before I get to July itself. Amen. All right, but same thing with the will of God. What is your what is your alternative? Amen. Are we here? 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Why? Because of divine guidance. There's divine guidance for us. And the main way it will guide us is through our spirit man. Job chapter 32 verse 8. Job 32 8. Let me quickly do some things and then tidy it all up. Amen. Are you here? Say amen if you are here. I can't hear the amen. Good one. I mean a good amen if you are here. Job chapter 32 verse 8. Verse 7. Job 32 7. I said days shall speak and multitude of years shall teach wisdom. You know, many of us think that oh, no, it doesn't matter. The older I get, the smarter, the more I will know things and the decisions to make and the smarter I will get. Not necessarily so. I have seen a 65 year old man make a decision that I wouldn't have made and I was 22 years old as an assistant pastor in those days. Hi! And I'm wondering, ah, So, understand this. So, what he's saying here is that I said, days shall speak and multitudes of years shall teach wisdom but there is a but, but means that I'm not exactly right. But, there is a what? Spirit in man. Remember, Proverbs 27, 27 says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. There is a spirit in you and I. Our inner man, our spirit. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding. That your spirit is linked to the inspiration from the almighty God. And uh, that inspiration will show you what to do. You will understand life and how to approach life by the spirit that is within you. And then he goes on to say, great man, and not always wise. They make foolish mistakes. Though they are great. Why? Who is always right? The spirit of God. Who is in our spirit? Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment all the time. So you don't have to wait until you are 75 or 85 before you say, I'll start making decisions right. When I'm that old, I'm still young. Now I'm, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Not necessarily so. Follow the leading of God in your spirit and you'll get things right. Say amen, somebody. In fact, there are certain decisions when you don't make in your learning years. Your lifetime is divided roughly into three phases. Your, your learning years, your earning years, and your yearning years. Zero to 30 are your learning years. Go to school. Get all the education you can get under your belt, maximally. At least get four or five years of tertiary institution before you start saying you are literate. Number two, your earning years from 30 to 60 what you did with your learning years usually will determine how much you earn in your earning years and your yearning year yearning years you meet some people who are already over 60 70 80 all well, they're just saying in 1919 hmm, ah how the world used to they are yearning now that is all they are giving you those are the yearning years very good that's when you become a mentor if you have handled your learning years and your earning years properly. The decisions you make during your learning years, if you don't make them with the Holy Spirit's guidance, oh, it will give you problems during your learning years, during your earning years, and then mega problems during your yearning years. I don't want to talk too much about that. But great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. And all of that. Let's leave that aside. Prerequisites to hearing from God. There are certain things that must be in place if you want to hear from heaven. Quickly, let me give you six of them. Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. 
mobile. You know, there was there's, there's a preacher who is quite popular and he's doing miracles, prophecy, this, that. And they asked him, "Are you born again?" He said, "No, no, no. I was I was born. I knew God from my mother's womb." And that's not true. No, 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 no. You must be born into this world the first time. Then you must be born again by God the second time. After you recognize you are a sinner. So any sinner who is giving you direction, prophecy, and all of that is doing it by the power of Satan. If he's not saved. So understand that. Anybody that will minister to you and give you direction and, pro- and even teaching, you need to know that he or she is born again first. Before being called into the ministry. So you must be born again. That's the number one prerogative. Number two. You must have the spirit of meekness. I found out that people that are not meek, God doesn't talk to them. What does meekness mean? Of humility and teachableness. Psalm 25 verse 9. Psalm 25 verse 9. The word of God says about God. The meek will he, God, guide in judgment. And the meek will he, God, teach his way. If you want God to guide you and you want God to teach you, you must be meek. I see arrogant, pompous people. I'm a self made man. Nobody can tell me anything. Who is that pastor? Self? My pastor ah, all these pastors are mugu, they are maga, they are using your brain. Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 not this one. Who cares about any? I was telling you folks the other day. I don't care about any, knowing anything about you, you know, but God lets me know things about you. But I tell the Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to know. It's too much responsibility. And too much. I personally, my personality is the kind of personality I don't like getting involved in people's lives. And God told me, because I'm, I've called you, you must get involved in their lives. So when I do it, many a times, I just do it because of the calling, not because I enjoy it in the flesh, in the natural. I, in my spirit, I, I, I serve God willingly. But I don't want to be proclosing and knowing things and calling you and counseling. Because I even know something about human beings. You know, sometimes I don't even feel like counseling. But because many people, they will just do what they want to do anyway. And I'm wondering, but I spent three hours counseling this couple. And they go back home and they're slapping each other again. I should better not have talked to you. <laughs> hey, man. I have things to do with my life. I'm a geologist. And I have other giftings and things I can do even if I'm not doing geology. Ah. Amen. I the any extra time I have spending with my wife, travel, go on vacation, spend that. I don't have to come to the office. Be nice. I don't have to believe God for myself. Sit down, cuddle my wife, and watch TV. Now, I have to, what I'm just saying is I have things to I can do. But amen. I love doing this one too. Because God said do it. But if you're not humble, who can help you? Not even God. You can have you I found out that even as a pastor, you can only force what do we say about camel? Is it camel now? Or the horse? You can force, you can sorry, you can what's that statement? English statement. You can you can you can take a horse is horse, 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 not camel. You can take a horse to the river. That's the best you cannot you can do. But you cannot force it to drink. You will still, you, it is still the decision of the horse to drink, even if the river is there, and it can die if it chooses not to take advantage of the fact that somebody has brought you to the river. That's that's what we do, and that's what God does for you. He gives you the word, but you have to choose to obey and do it. And by doing it. You live and you enjoy life. Can I have three loud hallelujahs from somebody? Come on, come on. You can do louder than that. Biggest one. So you must have the spirit of meekness. You must be humble and teachable. Number three, you want to hear from heaven, you must spend time with the Holy Spirit. Spend time with the Holy You must fellowship. Take time to listen to him, to talk to him, and let him talk to you. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14 is a very popular part where we used to close services. It says that may the grace of the Lord be with you, the, the, the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May it be with you. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That means that you must fellowship. God wants you to have ongoing in your life fellowship 
correspondence, two-way traffic, communication with the Holy Spirit. Talking to him, letting him talk to you. Li- talking to him and he listens. You now stop talking and he listens and he talks to you and you listen. You must create time every day. We call it quiet time. You must do it. And then God will speak to you. You will hear from heaven waiting on the Lord. Number four. Inquire of the Lord. Inquire of him. We read that in First Chronicles chapter 14 verses 8 to 17 last Wednesday service. If you were not around, please, you need to find out and get the messages. First Chronicles 14, 8 to 17. David was going for a battle and then he inquired of the Lord and God said, go, do it like this. Another time, the same people, the same kind of battle, but this time around, he went again and inquired of the Lord and God said, no, the instruction is different. Do it like this. So, you got to ask and ask. There's so many things you are struggling with until you ask. God will not talk and show you the way out. Until I opened my glove compartment, brought out that GPS thing in the car and switched it on. I didn't hear any voice talking to me. Amen. Number five. Have faith to accept you are hearing from God. So when God begins to speak, you must believe he's the one speaking. You must have faith. Say, I believe that I, I sense this in my spirit that God is the one speaking to me. Of course, there are things, ways you check it out. I'll share that in the, in the second service. Have faith to accept you are hearing from God when God speaks to you. Because Gideon, God spoke to you. He said, God, you are speaking to me about if it is you, let the water be on the around and let the wool be dry. And God did it again. And then he said, God, I know you've spoken to you and you heard, but if it is you, let the ground be dry and let the water. You, at some point, you have to take the leading by faith. Amen. And then, number six, willingness and openness to obey God's instructions. You must be willing and open to obey the instruction of God. There are certain things that can distort your connection, that can distort your hearing from God. You can clutter the signals. And these are five hindrances to hearing from God. You must remove these hindrances from your life and you begin to hear God properly. Hindrance number one, unbelief. Some people come to church, but they don't believe in the word of God. They don't believe that the pastor is inspired of God. They don't believe in the instruction coming forth. They just will unbelief. Are you like that? If you're like that, hey, you will not. Because these are spiritual signals. You will not even perceive it when it's coming to you. Unbelief. Number two, an undeveloped spirit. If your spirit man is not developed, it will be difficult for you to hear from God. What do you mean by develop? You have a spirit that is already saying, but is it developed? There are two different things. Amen. Now, I have muscles like any man, but there's somebody in church, his name is Tunde Yusuf. He's a bodybuilder. So if he removes his shirt, you will see all of the muscles, the biceps, the triceps, the, the pectoral, you'll see all the six packs. You'll be able to count the packs. Many of us have one pack. But you can have six if you develop it. So what you see in him as a bodybuilder is development. But you too have the same thing potentially, but you have not developed it. So, the same way spiritually. You might hear some people able to hear from God and it's because they've spent time developing spiritual exercise, spiritual press-ups, spiritual lifting weights. Spirit. Do you do that? Once, once your spirit stays undeveloped, just like your body stays undeveloped, can stay undeveloped, then it will be, you will not be able to pick things from God. How do you develop your spirit? I talked about that last on Wednesday. Spending time in the word of God. Praying in other tongues every day. Emphasize praying in other tongues in your life. Paul said, I pray tongues more than you all. No wonder God gave him revelation to write more than everybody the New Testament. It goes hand in hand. Amen. And all and all and all. Number three, because of time, unforgiveness. Five hindrances to hearing from God. Unforgiveness. When you are very slow in forgiving, you hold malice, grudges. You do not forgive. It creates spiritual deafness. Well, they hurt me. Yes, we know. But forgive them. 
but they have not come to ask for forgiveness. It does not matter. Forgive them in advance. Whether they come or not is their business. Let them deal with it with God. You want to clear your way so that you can hear God. Unforgiveness leads to spiritual deafness. Keep that in mind. And then, next, a seared conscience. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. We already dealt with that during the course of the month. A conscience that is calloused, seared, a spirit man, no longer sensitive. Seared, S-E-A-R-E-D, conscience. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 talks about it. Get some of our messages two or so weeks ago. Dealt with that extensively. And then finally, neglect of previous instructions. Neglect of previous instructions. Or procrastination of previous instructions. You see, if God tells you, do this, do this, do this, because you are struggling for finances, do this like this, do this like this, do this like this, this is how you handle your money. And he told you that, and he's watching you. One week, you don't do it. Two weeks, you don't do it. One month, you don't do it. Three months, you don't do it. Six months, you don't do it. You are still in financial problem. He said, Lord, tell me how to get up. God will not talk. In the military, they have, a, they have a statement. They say, obey what? The last word. Command. You have been told, stand there, die. And then you say, ah, I want to move. What should we be doing? What, what should we be doing? By now? It's two, two hours. Our God told us, you, you must not change. You want to move ahead, but the boss says, stand at eye. And you say, no, I am going to be at attention. Your guy will not talk to you anymore. And after a while, court marshal is waiting for you. And some of us here, the Spirit of God told me and said, there are people here, you are not hearing me because you heard me a while back, but you have not acted. And I'm not going to add more instruction on you until you obey the last instruction I'm not going to add to it stand up everybody let's close our eyes let's join our hands on the left and the right let's pray for one another that we will follow the voice of the master pray, begin to pray right now why should you even call yourself a Christian if you are not being led by the Holy Spirit and you are not being guided by the word of God tell the Lord, help us, help us pray out loud, help us oh God to follow your leading and your direction we may go into another message series definitely next month but get these messages and start listening more and more and more and more you cannot hear it once and say you have you've gotten it. No, 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 no. This is something you hear over and over before you grow growing it. But talk to the Lord and make a commitment. I want to hear you. I want to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, I pray that as we are praying right now, you will begin to speak. Areas we need to be corrected. Help us to effect the correction in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. As you are praying, if you have any problem, begin to tell the Lord, Lord, I receive direction on how to get a solution. Father, I pray and I command every mountain before your people to move in Jesus' mighty name. I release the answer, the solution, the instruction of heaven that will cause them to walk in the reality of their blessing and miracle. May they hear from you, Lord, and may they receive receive it. Thank you, Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you need more information on Reverend Yinka's messages, log on to www.gfconline.org or call the following numbers 01-77-44213 and 080-888-47223.